All right, we're back with the review for English 2. We're here on Unit 7. We are going to uh, look at the present progressive with future meaning. Basically, in English, uh, if we know something is going to happen in the future, okay, we could use the future tense, but often English speakers will use the future tense. Okay. Um, so on page 59, we can see some of the activities here, right? uh, some of the review activities. So let's take a look at these. Uh, we're going to do the one at the top. It's probably the more difficult of the first two. Uh, activity C, you can write on your own. Okay, so what you're going to do, it says uh, use the words in parentheses. Okay, that would be here. Uh, and you can uh, make a question. Okay, And the answers are already given here. So maybe you can figure out exactly what they want okay so uh, for example they give you go and the answer i'm going to london okay so london is a place so probably the first question is going first word is going to be where okay so where are you going okay. so we know the subject and the answer is i so the subject in the, que the question must be you the b verb is here okay. so where are you going i'm going to london is he going there now? Well, maybe. Or maybe he's going there tomorrow or this weekend. Okay. So like I said, uh, we often use uh, present tenses to indicate future meaning. Okay. When we know absolutely that we uh, are going to do something in the future, we often use the present tense. Okay. Uh, a good example is here in question, the answer for number one, I'm leaving next week. Okay, so I'm leaving is the present continuous or present progressive tense. But next week is obviously in the future. Okay, so I'm leaving next week. So that's a, a good sentence because the person knows that they are leaving. Okay. All right, I'll let you do uh, the activities. Press pause, and when you finish your answers, let's review. All right, welcome back. Uh, here are your answers. Okay, so looking at the different answers here. Uh, okay, so the answer, I'm leaving next week. That's a period of time, so we're going to put when. Again, the uh, subject and verb is same as the example. I am, so are you becomes uh, the verb and subject, and of course the, uh, sorry, the B verb and the subject, and of course the main verb is ing. When are you leaving? I'm leaving next week. Okay. Number two, the verb is go with you. So I wrote going with you. What kind of information? The answer gives you a person, a who. So who going with you? My sister is going with you, going with me. Uh, you could say, who are you going with? Okay, uh, I'm not sure if the grammar is correct there, but uh, uh, that's how many people would say it. Also, number three, uh, so they give you the verb do and then give you the, uh, the, the uh, space frame here in London. What are you doing in London? I'm visiting friends. Okay, so that's a, the name of an activity. Okay, so something she's going to do. So what exactly? There's no place. Um, uh, you could say, who are you going to visit? Because she mentions people. Who are you going to visit? Um, so that question would be fine. Uh, but the verb they give you is do. So they're looking for an activity. So the activity is visiting. So what are you doing in London? Note that in English, probably a lot of people would just say, okay, so we're talking about London, uh, leaving for London next week. My sister is going with me to London. What are you doing there? So what are you doing there? Oh, I'm visiting friends. Okay. Um, good. Uh, travel. Okay, so we're going to write traveling. 
Note the American spelling. Um, the answer, I'm traveling by plane. So by seems to imply a method. So the question, how? <clears throat> what method of transportation? I'm traveling by plane. So how are you traveling? Okay, I'm going to take a plane. Okay. And finally, uh, number five, where are you staying? I'm staying in a hotel, right? So in a hotel seems to imply where, a place, okay? Again, I'm, so all of these answers are I'm, except number two. So all the uh, questions are are you. Okay. So again, we're talking about you, because the answer is I, and the subject and verb agreement are you. Okay. I think these are correct. Nope. Okay, let's see what I did with number two. Don't like the answer. Who is going with you? Who is going with you? Okay. Looks like I got that right. Sometimes the ebook can throw you a curveball. Okay, let us go to, uh, let's go to unit eight, and we'll do the review there. Eight, uh, we're going to go to, uh, Activity B. Okay. All right. So match the clauses in column A with appropriate consequences from column B. Now, I don't see them labeled, but I guess this would be column A right here, and this box would be column B. Okay. So appropriate consequences. What does that mean? Okay. That's what it means. Okay. Good. Um, all right. So you're going to match these. Okay, um, and so what we're looking at here are, uh, we're looking at the second conditional, uh, sorry, the first conditional, and we're going to try out matching these um, with the consequences of what will happen. Okay, so a lot of these are using modals in the answers, uh, might, will, might, will, 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 right, so we're thinking of things that uh, are a resulting, as it says, a consequence, a resulting action. Uh, okay, I'm going to let you try this out on your own. First one is done for you. If you stop eating fast food, you might feel healthier. I don't guarantee it. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. I just don't know. Okay. So uh, you'll, but those, that would be the answer. Okay. Stop eating fast food, healthier. Okay. You can max, match B, C, D, E, F, and G with numbers one through six. Okay, so read the if clauses and then the modal clauses you can match. Yungyeol haseo. Right. I'll pause and when we're finished, we will resume. Um, I wonder if you do this with practice. We could probably figure this out. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's see what we can do for this. All right, so if you stop eating fast food you might feel healthier number one if you travel abroad answer you will learn about another culture okay. i don't know which culture but i guess of the uh country abroad good if you quit your job d she will be upset okay. i don't know who she is uh, maybe it's you uh, maybe it's a, a she in your life uh, the answer actually is G. Okay. If you quit your job, you will have to find a new one. A new one? A new job. Okay. So you don't need to repeat the word in and out here. Good. Three, if you study and review often, okay, if you study and review often, B, you will do well on your exams. All right. Okay. That's a, a fairly common commonly known uh, skill or piece of advice Four, if you go to bed early tonight if you go to go to bed if you go to sleep early okay, not uh, late but if you go to bed early answer e you will feel rested in the morning so rested All right, so you'll feel well rested you like you had lots of rest okay, enough sleep so you can work very well 
during the day. Okay, we're doing very well. Only two more answers. I think the answer for F is, sorry, no, answer for five is D. If you forget your mother's birthday, she will be upset. Okay, that's good advice. So number six, I think the answer is C. If you don't start your essay now, you might not finish it on time. It, all right, your essay. If you don't start your essay now, you might not finish your essay on time. On time uh, during the agree, agreed upon time. Okay. Not my students, they always finish on time. Good, so I think we figured that one out very well. Okay. So again, we're looking here at the first conditional. Um, these ones are using will, and most of these did too. But you might see other, uh, you might see other uh, modals used as well in the activity. Okay. All right. Enough of that nonsense. Let's go to unit. Uh, let's go to unit nine. Unit nine. Uh, we looked at uh, modals of obligation. Okay. And in that activity, um, I think I know what I'm doing here. In this activity, right, we talked about different words that you would use for um, things that you uh, are obligated to do, okay? that, uh, that you must do, that you have to do, or maybe you just merely should do. So we, again, we talked about the word like should would be something like advice. Okay, So you don't have to do it, but I think it's a good idea. Okay? But up here, again, you must do it. There's, there's no uh, choice on your part. It is something that you, uh, something that you would uh, need to do, something that is uh, required, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Okay. Also, we have phrases for uh, when you, uh, with something that you should not do, whether it's advice or something you must not do. Again, the same degree of obligation relates to that. And then when there's no obligation, you don't have to, you don't need to, it's not required. Okay. So again, it's some sort of um, uh, a negative evaluation of that, of, uh, of, some, of the degree of obligation. Uh, what do we got here? Number, so we're gonna to go to part B, and part B, uh, you're given two choices for uh, the modals, okay? So I think these other activities are easy enough, okay? And in part C, you're going to give your own advice. Part B, uh, you're given two choices, okay? And you're gonna answer each of the questions. You can choose one. The first example is done for you. You mustn't or you must not or do not have to walk on the grass. I saw a sign over there. Now, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure it's clear exactly which one. Um, anyway, with this one, you must not walk on the grass. Okay, so it's required that you uh, are that you do not walk on the grass. Okay, you don't have to. Again, is again something you're not obligated to do. But usually, people do not require you to walk on the grass. Okay, have you ever heard? Somebody say, you must walk on the grass. No, so there's no confusion there. Nobody says you have to, so we would never tell you that you don't have to. It's, it's understood. So you must not uh, break the law. You must not break the rule. The rule is written on the sign. So you mustn't walk on the grass. It's a fairly common sign. And you can try that, um, and you may have seen that uh, in your own time. Uh, okay, I'll let you do B. Again, read the sentence and choose which of the modal phrases you're given to that you're going to write here. Okay, I'll see you back here after you finish. All right, how did you do? Uh, we're going to try this on the practice just to see how smart we really are. All right. Again, you're choosing one of two modals. Let's try the first one. Number one, 
uh, you must buy your ticket online. You ought to buy your ticket online. It's cheaper that way. Okay. So the answer is ought to. Or oughta. You ought to buy your ticket online. Okay. So ought to is an advice phrase. Okay. So here, there's no there's no obligation. Okay. In fact, there's a choice. We know there's a choice because he's using a comparative. Okay. Buying a ticket online is cheaper. You don't have to, but if you do, it's cheaper. Okay, so he's giving advice. So you ought to buy your ticket online. I advise you to buy your ticket online. Okay. Uh, number two, you have to wear safety boots at work, or you should wear safety boots at work. It's a company policy. Okay, so policy is something you have to do. Okay? It's a required, it's a requirement. You must do it. So should is used for advice and have to is for required practices. Okay? You have to. Three, you must not speak louder. Okay. You don't have to speak loud. Okay, so one is obviously a requirement, and one is a piece of advice. Okay. You don't have to speak louder. You can speak louder if you want, but it's uh, <laughs> you're not required to speak louder. Okay. Okay. You don't have to speak louder. We can hear you well. Okay. So I think the answer is don't have to. Now, um, again, obviously they can hear you. Maybe they don't want you to speak louder, but they're, again, there's no rule about it. It's just that maybe a, a, a strong piece of advice. Okay. So again, um, speaking loud is not required. Okay. We have the ability to hear you. Okay. Number four, you need to practice more. You ought to practice more. So again, you have two choices. Necessary, not necessary. Okay. Required, not required. Okay. So what are we talking about? You need to practice more. You ought to practice. You will definitely fail if you don't improve. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So you'll definitely fail. Absolutely. Okay. So it sounds like a pretty strong evaluation. Okay. You're not improving. You'll definitely fail. I think we're going to put need to. Okay. Now, failing is an option, uh, usually. So we wouldn't normally put need to. I'm just kidding. I'm going to try this. Okay, I was right. Okay. Uh, but that's a tough one. I can't really, because this is obviously advice. And uh, all right. So they're strongly suggesting that they don't fail. What's a so you need to. So that's a very strong uh, suggestion. Okay. Five, you have to, you should. So again, okay. advice, requirement. Okay. So what are, what are we looking for? You have to get a new passport before your trip. Yours is expired. Okay. So yours has expired would probably be better grammar. So you must, something he has, you cannot leave the country without your passport. You cannot travel to another country without a passport. Okay. Uh, okay. Number six, must not and ought not. Or ought not to, sorry. So this is the choice. This is the advice. I'm giving you advice. And here is a rule. So you mustn't touch the paintings in the museum. You ought not to touch the museum. They're priceless works of art. Um, all right, so again, this is a bit difficult. I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a rule, just like a strong piece of advice. Um, I'm going to put mustn't. Okay. Maybe that's a bit of context because I know this is a rule in many museums. Okay. Here, he doesn't mention a rule. He's just saying, oh, you shouldn't. Uh, so it does sound like advice. Uh, 
Um, but I'm going to put mustn't. And I got that right. Okay. Again, so it doesn't look like a rule here. It looks like advice. So this should be the answer. Um, but I do know from context that you do not touch the paintings in the museum. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, so they, he should have made that clear. Not only are they priceless works of art, you will get removed from the um, from the museum. Okay, looks like we got those right. But again, you're choosing between uh, something that is a choice, some advice, or a rule, necessity, uh, a must, a requirement. Okay. All right. Good. So our next stop. Our next stop is going to be Unit 10. Okay. And in Unit 10, we're looking at uh, tag questions. Okay. So with the tag questions, again, it's on page 83. The tag questions, uh, we're going to do this first activity here, letters A through H. Now, in each one, you're given a, a, uh, a sentence, okay? which usually which has the person's opinion okay so the example she's really good at math okay so she's really good at math and then you have the tag here isn't she or maybe maybe she doesn't really know she's really good at math isn't she so watch the tone of the two different styles okay uh, so that's her opinion i think she is really good at math uh, i think doug plays on the varsity team okay. then you can add the tag here remember the rules for tags okay uh, in fact maybe we'll just do a quick review of that okay the three types of tags okay uh if the be verb or if you have uh an auxiliary verb or a modal okay and then there's everything else okay. remember the structure okay so you have the the verb and then you have the negative form, or if it's a negative statement, you'd have the uh, positive form, the tag, and the subject stays the same. Okay. If it says Bob is from Canada, then you'd say isn't he. You wouldn't say isn't Bob. So we always use a subject pronoun here. Anyway, review page 77 if you need a bit of help, uh, but you can review it. Uh, before or during the answering of or the completion of these sentences here. Okay. So you're given the stem and you're going to add the tag right here. All right, when you're finished, let's review. All right, let's try with the letter A. A, Doug plays basketball on the varsity team. Okay. So fairly standard sentence, subject, verb, object. Okay, there's no B verb. Okay, and there's no modal. So the answer, okay, do, so we're going to use the verb do, okay, in lieu of play, and the subject, he. Okay. Now, uh, the verb doesn't match the subject, okay, so he, do he, does he, okay, and this is positive, so this should be negative. Okay, we always use the contraction. Doug plays basketball on the varsity team, doesn't he? Correct. Okay. The drive, no, uh, letter B, the driving test won't be hard. Okay. Now, we have the B verb right here, but we also have this auxiliary verb. Okay. It's modal, let's say. Okay. So, driving test is not a he or a she or a they, it's a thing, so it, okay? What's the verb, or what's the modal? Will not, okay? Will not, we're gonna remove the not, okay? Because this is negative, so this should be positive. The driving test won't be hard. Will it? Good. Learning a new language isn't easy. So the subject, it. Okay, again, it's a thing, learning. Okay, so the, the act of learning, so it. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, it looks like the B verb, and it's negative. 
Okay, so we're going to use the be verb, and it's positive. Learning a new language isn't easy, is it? Is it? <laughs> D. We don't need to make a reservation. What's the subject? We. What's the verb? Need, but again, it has an auxiliary. We don't need to make a reservation. Uh, so the auxiliary is do. Does we? No, do we? And this is negative, so this is positive. That should be good. Good. We don't need to make a reservation, do we? E, I'm getting better at this. Subject? I. The verb? Am. Am not I. Okay. Now, I think the problem here is that am doesn't have a con uh, conjun uh, doesn't have a uh, It doesn't have a contraction form. So we wouldn't say, uh, I am, I'm getting better at this M not I. That would make grammatical sense. But this is the exception to the rule. So be careful. With I am, the tag is aren't I. Okay. So that should be correct. Good. Okay. So again, it doesn't follow the rules. It's the one exception. So be careful. F, we can finish the assignment tomorrow. Okay. And the verb is finished, but we got a helper verb. Okay, auxiliary. So the verb is can. Okay. Matches, and this is positive, so this is going to be negative. Oops. We can finish the assignment tomorrow, can't we? G, Ella was in the school play. Now, Ella is a woman, if you don't know that. It's a girl's name. Uh, now, Ella was in the school play. So it's the be verb. Good. And the subject and verb agree. Uh, but this is positive, so this should be negative. Okay. Ella was in the school play, wasn't she? So I think she was, I think Ella was in the school play, but I'm asking you to be sure. H, they shouldn't be painting on the wall. Should they? All right. So there's the helper verb. It's negative. Here's the helper verb again. Positive. The subject is exactly the same. Perfect. Okay. So that should be good review. So when you're done this, okay, on page 83, you can go and do the other act, uh, review activities here. It should be easier. That's a good activity, and you can practice it on your own with the ebook. Okay. On to unit 11. Okay, unit 11, on page 91, we're going to look at the grammar review here and the first activity. Simple enough. Find the correct sentence in each pair. All right, so you see in these ones. Okay. So uh, the example, did you ever meet, did you ever met my brother? Uh, B, have you ever met my brother? Okay, so met my brother seems to be correct. Um, now, obviously A is incorrect when you're using the, uh, trying to say here. when you're using the uh, past tense, right, so the modal would take the past tense and then the, uh, verb would stay in the uh, in its regular form in the, the imperative. So, did you ever meet my brother? Uh, but it says, did you ever met my brother? Okay. Uh, okay. Sometimes the time frame should be uh, clear. But here, B, have you ever? So, this is a very common phrase that we use in English. Uh, have you ever met? Have you ever done? Have you ever uh, uh, seen? Have you ever... Um, yeah, so any of the uh, past participles would go with, uh, after the phrase, have you ever. Okay. Don't usually use ever in a positive statement, just in questions or in negative statements. Okay. 
All right. Uh, so again, read each sentence and choose the correct one, or don't choose the incorrect one. Right. So you can press pause, and we'll be back here in a second. Uh, let's take the use the ebook to its fullest, and we're going to look at the answers here. Oh, I can't do that. Um, I'll just go over the answers one at a time then and see how we do with this. Uh, all right, so in the example, uh, we got that one. Number one, uh, I've seen a movie last week. I saw a movie last week. The answer is B. Uh, number two, uh, has he left for school yet? Has he yet left for school? A. Three, when have you eaten breakfast? B, when did you eat breakfast? Four, she's ever been late for work. She's never been late for work. Five, they haven't finished yet. They have finished yet. Six, did she won a prize? Has she won a prize? Seven, what time did he arrive today? What time has he arrived today? Eight, have you already sent the email? Have you sent already the email? Okay, good. So B, A, B, B, A, B, A, A, okay? Let's look at the answers here. Uh, so number one, I've seen a movie last week, okay? So we've specified the time so we would need the past tense. You could say I've seen a movie, period. Okay. But since you're you've given us the time that it happened, we have to use the past tense. So I saw a movie last week. I've seen a movie. Okay. Well, when did you see the movie? I saw the movie last week. Okay, number two, has he left for school yet? So where does yet go in the structure? Okay, the answer, we'll put it at the end of the sentence. Okay. Now, in number eight, we're going to look at the word already. Okay. And we know from this example, already would come before the verb. Okay. So the verb is sent. So already acts pretty much as an adverb describing the verb. Okay. Now this one, yet, um, we don't put it before the verb. Okay? It's yet seems to imply a time frame, so it's not quite the same function as already. Even though um, semantically you're, you're saying the same thing. Okay. Um, have you already sent the email? Okay. Have you sent the email yet? Okay. So again, so at this point in time, has he left for school? Okay. Or at this point in time or before, has he left for school? Okay. Uh, okay. And did you already perform this action at some point in the past? So already and yet have some similarities in function, uh, but they have uh, different properties. Okay. Number three, when have you eaten breakfast? When did you eat breakfast? Okay. Um, I guess this one's not really wrong, but I think this is what they're trying to find out. So when or what time did you eat breakfast? Okay. So they're looking for a specific time, and that needs the uh, past tense. Okay. Okay. So you probably wouldn't ask it for a regular activity like eating eating breakfast. Four. She's ever been late for work. B. She's never been late for work. Okay. So as I said before, we don't usually use ever in a positive statement, okay? So we usually use them in questions. Has she ever been late for work? Uh, she's never been late for work. So a negative statement or a question, but not, uh, but not a positive statement. Five, they haven't finished yet. They have finished yet, okay? So here, yet would be redundant. By implication, you have finished, as we stated here, at this point in time, 
happened in the past. So the grammar does all the work. You don't need this time frame. Okay. But often we use for the negative. Okay. So something that hasn't happened. He didn't do it yesterday. He didn't finish this morning. He didn't finish this afternoon. At no point did he finish. He hasn't finished. Okay. Um, or they haven't finished. Okay. Um, so I guess this is a bit redundant too, now that I think of it, uh, but we would use this in a, a negative, a negative statement. So that's fine. Number five, the answer is A. Uh, six is obviously wrong. Did she win a prize? That would be correct. Okay. We have the past tense is taken by the modal. And why is the verb also past tense? So did she win? Yes, she did. She won a prize. Okay, so you could use the past tense in a positive statement. But with the question or a negative, you need the modal. Has she won a prize? Ever? Okay, has she won a prize? Yet? Uh, seven. What time did he arrive yesterday? So what time has he arrived yesterday? That sounds strange because you're looking for an action that could happen at any time, something that would be finished by now. Okay, But um, we're looking for what time, so we need to uh, find a point in time. Okay. So if someone says, has he arrived today? Yes, he arrived this morning. Oh, what time did he arrive? What time did he arrive today? He arrived at 9 a.m. Answer is A. Uh, eight, have you already sent the email? Okay, right, not have you sent already. So again, in this one, uh, you just need to switch these two words around. It's just a matter of structure. Okay, And uh, <clears throat> again, the adverb, the adverbial would come before the actual verb have you already sent the email you could put this word here already you could put it at the end just like yet so maybe that's where the confusion lies so yet would be here already would be here um sorry yeah so yet already could be in both places actually have you sent the email already okay all right good <clears throat> All right, so that concludes our lecture series. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to do unit 12. I think we've, uh, you might not need a review for that since you've already done the work. Um, anyway, if you want to do this again, please use your ebook. Ebook is a great way to practice. I can't say it enough. Ebook, ebook, ebook. Uh, but I assume you have already bought your textbook or you're not going to. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck on your test and uh, good luck in the rest of your other tests, the rest of the semester.